right, good afternoon and welcome to John Box Watercolor. Today we're going to be painting a scene from Whitby, England. But before we get started, if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up. And if you like what you see, consider subscribing. I'm going to put a reference photo over here on the right just so you can take a look. It's a fairly simple scene. We've got a roadway and a tower here. We've got some really nice contrast between the light sky and these dark buildings. And so we're going to really try to incorporate that. We've got a little bit of vegetation and foliage on the right. We're going to try to soften it up down low, keep it sharp up top, and we'll see how it turns out. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to spray my palette here, get everything loosened up. <clears throat> Get a little spray on the paper as well. And let's get going here. We're gonna keep the sky fairly cool here. I'm gonna grab a large mop brush just because I've got a pretty decent area to cover. I'm gonna grab some cobalt blue. Grab a little paint from that other palette just to neutralize things here. I'm just going for kind of a, a cooler gray wash there. Let's pull it across and see how it looks. I think that looks pretty good. And we'll try to vary our, our color and tones as we get further down into the painting. But for now, we're just going to keep it fairly consistent. Slowly working my way down. Just going for that very smooth transition here. All right, let's grab a little bit of warm. Just to vary things up there, very nice. We're getting a little darker as we get closer to the bottom just to get that sort of atmospheric effect. I'm also warming it up just a touch. Okay. There we go, I'm gonna give this a spray. Just keep everything nice and wet. And we'll keep working along. Really the only thing I'm thinking with this sky here is I want to keep it nice and pale, fairly neutral. Just slowly work my way down. All right, so we're working through the building area now. That's going to be painted on our second wash, so I don't have to worry too much about that. I am, however, I'm going to cut out some of these figures on the left over here to try and maintain as, as much light as possible. I'm gonna grab my smaller mop brush. We'll thicken our paint up just a little bit. <clears throat> just make it easier so that when we come back, we'll be able to darken things up a little bit better. I'm just gonna come through here. I'm just working around. This figure here is going to be dark, so I can just go straight through them. I think it's really these, these figures on the left I want to try to keep <clears throat> a little bit lighter. I'm going to grab my smaller brush here, and we're just going to work around them. Okay. That's okay. All right. I'm going to come through this car here. I like that. Now I'm going to add some water because I want to lighten that up just a touch through there. And we're going to warm up just slightly our foreground here. I'll grab a little burnt sienna, a little ultramarine, a little cobalt. Let's see, that's a little too warm. Throw some, I go a little ultramarine. There we go. And I'm just working my way along here. Just working along. Darken it up as we get towards the bottom. And you'll notice I'm working fairly quick here. This first wash, we're just kind of laying down that base. And so we can uh, we can afford to make mistakes here. I'm not, not too concerned. 
I'm gonna grab, let's see, got a paper towel here. Always keep a paper towel nearby. I'm just gonna blot out some of these windshields just to lighten them up. Lighten that figure there. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. <clears throat> I would like to get just something a little bit darker at the bottom there. So I'm gonna grab some neutral tint, a little yellow ochre, a little burnt sienna. Let's just try to darken it up just down there at the bottom. Let that kind of drift down. As long as our paper's wet, you see there's kind of a hard line here. It will soften itself if I just sort of leave it alone. Um, yeah, I think we look, I think we look pretty good here. The one thing I am going to do while this is still wet on this side is there's a bit of foliage in the back there, and I want to lay a little bit of a foundation for that. I'm going to make this pretty warm. And I'm going to start higher than I think I should because it's always going to drift down. And I'm just going to introduce some kind of foliage shapes over here on the right. And I'm doing that by just dabbing my brush there. And we're going to add some much thicker and darker stuff here later on. But that's at least a start to give us something over there. And it's probably a bit too light because this is going to dry much lighter. I'm going to add some thicker, warmer paint in there, especially down near the bottom. You can see here that darkness. See how it slid down when we added that dark there? I see beginners trying to mess with things too much. You need to give watercolor time to move and time to fix itself. Okay, I think that's a good starting spot there. Let me grab my paper towel, and we'll dry up this bottom puddle we've got going there. Let's clean off that windshield, clean off that figure there. Okay, I think we're, this is a good stopping point here. Let me add just some little directional lines there help keep things just in per, in uh, perspective. So we're gonna let this dry, we're gonna come back and we're gonna add our second wash. All right, we are back and ready to start our second wash. This is nice and dry and we're gonna start here with that tower. Now it's a little bit cooler in the reference photo so I'm gonna try to stick to that. Let's see here. Just getting a mix of my blues there, and I've got some lavender over there on the right-hand side. We'll mix in something warm to cool it off, or excuse me, to neutralize it a little bit, warm it up. And we're just looking for that happy medium. You don't ever want your colors to be too extreme, and so you've got to kind of play that game of just going back and forth between warm and cool. I'm gonna set my towel over here on the right. All right, I'm gonna grab a little Chinese white as well. This really just kind of aids in, in uh, thickening up and it gives the paint this very creamy-like consistency. All right, so I'm gonna make a mark there and see what I think. Give this a spray. I wanna keep our, our paper fairly damp. And we're just gonna start building into our tower here. Now, I'm going to be somewhat careful here with these brush strokes. I'll get a little bit more loose as we get into the body, but I want the, the edges of that tower to be fairly accurate. Now, I need to darken this up. I'm going to grab some neutral tint. I'm going to come back up here towards the top, and I'm just touching my brush, letting that pigment bleed in there. And I'm going to let the water that's left within that shape, do the work for me and, and pull it down. <clears throat> now you'll also notice I'm leaving a few gaps of light. This just helps aid in the illusion of detail, it helps add a little interest. Always leave a little bit of light there, okay? 
and then pull over here there was another triangular shape let's do something like that okay i think that tone looks nice we're gonna have to work to make it a bit more interesting i think i think that tone is is good for the most part just pull that across and we're just going to slowly work through our building here and i'm just kind of pulling my brush along poking it a little bit dragging it just trying to vary vary the brush strokes just to get some more variation in what we're doing now i need to create some distance for the the right side of this building what i'm going to do is i'm just going to dip my brush in water create a little wet spot here and kind of push it back into our building if i need to i can pull a little pigment over there but it should create that sort of fading effect that we're looking for all right let's warm it up i want to warm the body of this building up a little bit we'll keep the top cool and then we'll warm it up as we work our way down just to get a little bit of a um, some distinction between the top and the the lower portions of this building okay just grab a little burnt sienna now i got to remember here a couple of things one i got to be careful around my figures but two i did not leave much light in that building and so I don't want to have just a solid dark shape. It's got to have a little bit of light on it. Even just this little kind of ridge that I've left here is going to help with that. So make sure you're leaving just that little bit of light in there. It really makes a difference. I'm going to grab my smaller brush. I'm going to grab that same kind of warm we've been dealing with there and just add some little dark tops and things to this building, which I believe is a church. Right, throw some darker spots in there. Maybe something like that. Just trying to break up that top edge just slightly. All right, introduce a little water into that mix. Grab some more of that neutral tint. I want it to be very dark down here because this is what we're going to use to cut out some of our figures and really get that contrast on the, the cars that we're going to be looking for here. I'm just working down here a little bit. I need to add a little water in there. I don't remember what artist coined this i cannot claim it as my own but i was watching a demo one time and he said when in doubt fuzz it out and i have always liked that and it really rings true if you've got something in the distance there and you're not quite sure what to do with it give it a little fuzz all right let's grab some neutral tint some blues some browns Let's work around these figures. This is really the only time where I'm trying to be very deliberate in my, in my brush strokes because this negative paint is really gonna help shape what we're, we're trying to bring out of the darkness back here. All right, that looks nice. And do the same thing over here. Just working around these figures, taking my time. Okay. That looks nice. All right. I need to add some foliage over here on the right hand side. It was pretty warm in the painting, or excuse me, in the reference photo. If you haven't seen my 
other videos on painting figures and foliage. I'll have the links for those in the description of this video. Um, but I'm going to use that technique I talk about there for, for building up foliage, creating a little interest here. Let's darken that up. We'll get not only the dark contrast, but we'll also add in a little, a little cool as well. Always looking for that contrast in watercolor. It's what creates that interest. Pull a, clean that up. Okay, this is coming along very nice. All right, it's a very simple scene, but uh, so far I think it looks, I think it looks good. We're going to keep working through here. I'm going to add some vertical lines here and turn those into like some lamp posts or something down there later on. I think what I want to do now, <clears throat> I want to work in to these cars a little bit. I'm going to start with this large vehicle here. And I want to do some type of a cool gray color. Now, <clears throat> I really need to keep this dark, or I should say I need to keep this paint very thick. Anytime we're working with our, once we kind of work down, we've got our, our buildings and foliage, as we get closer to this ground level, this is where we need to make an impact. Spray that. We need to make that impact. And so we've got to do that by thickening up our paint and not being afraid to get dark and bold with our colors. Okay, and I'm just grabbing pure neutral tint now as I work my way down the body of that car. What I'll do is I'll pull some very slight tires there and I'll add a shadow here in just a second. I'm trying to decide shadow wise, I think we're gonna have the sun it's from behind because this building is backlit, but we're gonna do kind of a lower right hand sun, I think is what we're gonna aim for. So let me do this. I'm gonna go ahead and let's introduce a little shadow there. You always wanna keep your shadows. <clears throat> you can keep the tones the same as, as the objects that they're attached to, but you wanna try to change the temperature if you can. I just warmed that up just a little bit and it will really help differentiate between the car and the shadow. I'm just adding a dark spot for a, a grill there. <clears throat> and tell you what, maybe we'll add a uh, some mirrors. Yeah, I think that looks good for now. Give this a spray, always trying to keep things moist on the page. Let's do... Let's do a taxi color over here. Same principles apply. We'll start with that, whatever color we want to make the vehicle, and then we'll slowly, we'll just start adding in that neutral tint until we're essentially just working with neutral tint here. And I'll pull down just a few tires there. Need to thicken that up. And while I've got this shadows, or this, this tone here that I'm going to use for these shadows, it can be helpful to do all your shadows at once, just so you're not constantly trying to match that same uh, temperature and tone. And so I'm going to come through here and just try to do my shadows all at once. It should help keep things a bit, a bit easier for me. I'm just looking here, extend that across. You always want to try to keep your shadows connected to things as well. All right, let's give that a spray. Let's keep working along. I'm going to grab some neutral tint there. I'm gonna work a grill in on the front of this car as well. That same technique, 
it's still wet, so it's going to have that nice kind of softening as it as it works its way in. And we will throw on some mirrors as well. All right, let's work on our background cars. These I'm not as uh, <clears throat> picky about when it comes to working in that that contrast of light to dark, or I shouldn't say contrast, working in that <clears throat> transition of light to dark. Um, with these, I'm just going to probably do them in about, we'll do like two brush strokes here. Let me just make this one a little bit more blue. That's too blue, I think. Always work to try and neutralize your colors a little bit. I see, again, I, I've mentioned this, but I see a lot of beginners just pull straight out of the out of the pail with these really bright colors and <clears throat> it always ends up looking a little uh, a little cartoonish. Add some grills there. Maybe that was gonna be another car. Warm it up, try to get that shadow tone I had before. I'll just throw something under there. Okay, this is coming along very nicely. I'm going to give it another spray. Just to keep everything alive here. I'm going to take a little bit of this and I'm going to introduce some darker paint just in that foliage there. And I'm also going to add a darker roof line here. Again, that's nice and wet, so that should soften, create a more subtle effect. Oh, I think that looks very nice. I want to add just, if I can get away with it, some darker branches over here, just along that edge there. <clears throat> I've got to be careful. It's it's so similar to the building. It's not maybe necessarily a bad thing, but I'm going to have to think about that. All right, let's work on our figures. Always the most fun part. Let's start with our figure over here on the right. I'm going to do... We're going to do some of that Chinese white for the body here. And I think we're going to do some type of a cool suit color for this individual. I'll do something like that. And I'm just letting those colors bleed in there. Letting watercolor make my job as easy as possible. Just drawing some suggestions of legs. Again, I'm not going to paint the whole thing. I kind of want to create this almost Kind of motion-like feel, kind of dream-like feel. So I want to leave some gaps, and I'm just, I'm just neutralizing that uh, burnt sienna a little bit before I bring it in there. Grab some neutral tint, add a little hairline. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll keep moving across here. I've kind of changed my mind on this figure. I should have just darkened them completely, but I think I'm just going to have them be a just a very dark, dark figure there. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Hmm. Having second thoughts, what do I wanna do? Eh, you know what, I changed my mind. I spoke too soon. Let's do the same thing here. We'll do some Chinese white. I may just have them be just a very simple Kind of white shirt. I'm going to pull that down far enough so that it kind of bleeds in there. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I pulled that shadow a little too low. That was supposed to be the shadow for that figure, but that's okay. It's these figures over here. I would like to do a little lavender, I think. Yeah, that's always a pretty color, especially when you're trying to Get that contrast with what's behind it. Lavender always works well for me. I may have done the exact same thing there where I pulled that shadow not low enough. That's okay. 
Okay. And the other figure, I'll tell you what too. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna give this figure a vest. I'm gonna do that by just dabbing my brush there. You're not gonna see me wipe straight through. I'm gonna do something just like that. Hopefully that looks like a vest. Okay. All right, what to do for our last figure here? What to do, what to do. Everything's been pretty cool. If I can do a subtle warm color, I think that might be nice. Let's see, might be, might be too much going on, but let's give it a try. I don't think that looks nice. These two are on a date over here. Give some hairline. And pull that over just a touch there. Okay. Maybe you can see just one leg poking out there. Hmm. Don't really like how that figure turned out there. I think I need to do a couple of things to fix this person. I think their head got too high and pulled it up a bit too far. I want to see if I can fix that without it looking like a giant hat, but we'll see. Okay. Let's just add some more paint in there. I'm gonna grab some more of that Chinese white and just tap it into the body and just let it run. I think that'll look much better. If I wanna add that vest, I'll come back and do it shortly. You know, let it dry first. <clears throat> All right, I think that looks nice. Grab some more of that Chinese white. I'm just pulling it a bit more into that body there. Okay, all right, what to do next? I talked about turning these into some telephone poles here. I need to lighten that up a little bit. Just the idea there. Big vertical line there. Okay. That's not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. All right. Uh, I'm liking the way this is looking. Let's let this dry, and we're going to come back and add some more touches, and we'll, we'll finish things up. All right, guys. We are back and ready to finish this painting up. This is now completely dry, and... We're gonna finish it up. So I'm gonna take, I've got a somewhat of a beat up brush here and what I wanna work in are some dry brush marks to add in some detail on this building here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray my palette just a little bit and let's mix up something dark, a little bit warm here. Need to get it thicker than that. Whenever you're doing these dry brush, you need that paint to have a lot of pigment and not very much water. What I like to do is, you can kind of see the top of this board here that holds up my palette. I like to do one practice line just to get off some of that, that really wet paint and then start working into my, my building here. And all I'm looking to do is just take that and we're just adding some perspective lines here. And you can see how well that paint turns up when it's dry like that. All right, let me warm it up just a little bit. Add something for the roof there. And you don't want it to be too strong it's just enough to kind of give those suggestions of things that we're looking for. All right, so I'm just going to pull some 
some vertical lines along that building there. I just want to give it a little something there. Not much. I'm just going to darken that up a little bit. Okay. All right, that looks nice. I can do the same thing over here, just in our foliage. Okay. And I may just throw a couple of figures there in the background just to fill things in a little bit. Okay, and I'll smear them a little bit with my finger. Okay, now let's take and add some of our white titanium gouache to kind of give some highlights and we'll do some, some headlights as well. And I think I've decided, I think we're gonna do a tail light on this car. But first, we're gonna just come through and add those little accents there. And I'm just taking my smallest brush here, just making sure that we've got something to break these figures out from the darkness behind them. And I'm also gonna take and just, we're gonna add some other little accent marks and things just to create a little bit of noise. We'll add our, some headlights there, something like that. I want to add a vertical line there, maybe one there as well. And I'll put a little highlight on the mirror. A little something on the top of the car. And I want to do a tail light here. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my bottle here and I'm going to try to protect the rest of my painting. I just want this area wet. I'm just spraying underneath that piece of paper there. So this has got some water on it because I want these tail lights to run a little bit. And I'm going to grab some thick pigment. I'm just going to put oops, just a little bit more water in there. I just want just a little tail light action there. Not much. It doesn't have to bleed a whole lot, but I just want it to be a little bit softer in there. And that'll that'll help kind of pull that together. I do think though, I may have I, think I got it just a bit too wide. I'm going to try to pull that. i got to be careful to try and control it, right? Because this is now very wet. All right. Taking a step back here, just taking a look to see if there's anything else I want to do. I'm going to set these brushes down. I'm going to take my towel and just dab off the bottom here. Okay. And I think we look pretty good for the most part. Um, I'm just looking here and I'm just, I'm just nitpicking right now. If there's anything I want to add, uh, need that to be softer. Need a few windows there. I may take, and I was looking at that reference photo and it had some red street signs. I think I'm going to just come in here and add a little bit of a circle there. Just some red marks here and there throughout the painting. And then I'm gonna come back with my paper towel or I've got my, my regular towel as well, but maybe a bit large. I'm just gonna soften them up. Just trying to add a little bit of interest to what's going on here. But overall, I think I'm gonna stop while I'm ahead. I like this layout. Everything looks good. Is there anything else? Anything else? All right, I'm doing one thing and then we're done. I wanna add one light post here. And you gotta move quickly. But we had some over in the background there and so I wanna make sure we've got something over in the front here. Okay. 
And just like that, we're done. Okay, let's take the tape off and let's take a look and see what did we do well and what could we have done a bit better on. All right, let's peel this off. Oh, and you know what? I've got to sign it as well. Forgot about that. <clears throat> right off the bat, I'll say I like this painting. Um, I think this is really clean. The colors are very neutralized. You've got a lot of this kind of cooler gray tones. And anytime I can have very neutral colors on my palette, I think it leads to a more realistic painting. I think the contrast from our windshields looks great. Our figures look nice as well. Let me sign this. Things that I could have done better on. I wish that I would have darkened these, these um, kind of road lines I have. I should have done a little bit more work on them on that first wash. Um, let's see, what else, what else? I think I should have saved this highlight line to run off of that lamp post I added late there, but that's okay. I think we could have added some interest to our building. It's just a little bit dark and maybe just a touch boring, but overall, very pleased with the painting here. And I can't resist, I'm gonna throw a tie on there. Very pleased with the painting. So if you stayed with me to the end, I really appreciate it. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing. And if you really like what you see here, all of these paintings are going to be for sale in my store. I'll have this one uploaded later this week. So thanks again and keep on painting.